So welcome to our session. I'm Marty Cornell. I'm the vice chairman of the Right Climate Stuff Research Group. In this session, we'll be covering the trajectory of the generation of electricity with the focus on the United States. But the issues are applicable to the global situation. For those not familiar with the Right Climate Stuff, we formed in 2011 as a discussion group of mostly NASA, Johnson Space Center engineers and scientists who were curious about the basis for claiming man's dominant influence on climate. First, I'd like to take a moment to pay homage to these three founders of our team. How Duran led the right climate stuff from our beginning to his passing early last year. His research forms the basis of our view that there is no climate crisis, a subject that he presented at Heartland uh, conferences and other conferences. Tom Weissmiller spoke at many international conferences on his research into sea level rise and was to have given an update at this conference. Unfortunately, he passed away in June. Both Hal and Tom are missed. And Jim Peacock is the chairman of the Right Climate Stuff and he led our efforts to put this session together Unfortunately, he's not able to attend, but I'm sure he's looking at us and will give us a critique later on. After hearing from climate scientists invited to our, at the beginning, monthly meetings, such as Annie Dessler and John Nelson Gaiman from Texas A&M and John Christie of the University of Alabama Huntsville, we decided to focus on the issue of CO2, specifically to determine to what extent can human uh, related uh, releases of CO2 into the atmosphere cause the Earth's se surface temperature increases that would have harmful effects. We approach this question using the same methods that were used in the design of manned spacecraft. That is, testing our hypothesis with analysis validated by empirical data. The result of this work is summarized on this slide, where we use the actual data of the rise of atmospheric CO2 from pre-industrial time to the present, and the global mean surface temperature, shown here as the temperature anomalies in the blue diamonds. We then project it to 2100, the upper bound of this trend, based on the increases of carbon dioxide from supply side limited burning of fossil fuels. This empirically based model suggests that the Earth will warm a maximum of one degree C by the end of the century. We believe that such database models are most appropriate for policy decisions. Others, most recently Judy Curry in her October 7th blog, are expressing the same conclusions. Unfortunately, policymakers are basing their decisions on unvalidated climate models that run hot versus reality. These projections are even worse for the new CMIP-6 models, which show an average of warming more than two times the real world. So what do we know? We know that Mother Nature is controlling the climate. CO2 emissions are not. And we also know that more CO2 is definitely beneficial to Mother Nature's work. And what are we learning? Well, for one, we learned that wind and solar energy are not free. When the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, you got to have backup energy ready. This afternoon, our team will be focusing on three aspects of electrical energy. Very good night. We'll cover the increasing instability of electrical grids from, forth, from the forced growth of wind and solar power sources. Greg is a native Texan and a retired engineer residing in Pearland, Texas. Since retirement in 2017, his focus has been on the study of climate change and the public policy implications associated with this important issue. Bob Bowman will give us a look at the future of nuclear energy, which is the inevitable source of grid power. Bob resides in Savannah Park, Maryland. 
He founded and runs a 35-year-old manufacturing company specializing in computer security and EMP-hardened enclosures. Over the past 17 years, he has a keen interest was formed in EMP harden, hardening of the grid, advancing the state of art of nuclear power technology, and challenging the impacts of climate change ideology. He joined the Right Climate Stuff re research team like I did in 2012, and has been an active citizen advocate in industry with Congress, and is a subject matter expert since then. And last, Tom Mosier will contrast energy realism with the threat of harmful congressional infrastructure and build back better bills, finishing with a call to action. Tom was the one, in fact, who founded uh, the Right Climate Stuff in 2011. He served over 25 years as a NASA senior executive and key member of the Apollo, Space Shuttle, and Space Station programs. More recently, he led the creation of commercial space ports in Texas and has worked closely with the U.S. Congress and Texas legislature to advance the aerospace industry. These presentations, along with our position papers and climate science essays, can be accessed on our website, therightclimatestuff.com. So let's begin with Greg's talk. Greg? 